Welcome to Learn the Sky, your online resource for learning about the stars. Learn the Sky is now on Patreon, so if you would like to support this channel in order to learn more about the sky, please visit our Patreon account. The link is listed below. We are also offering new online courses, so if you're interested in learning about the sky in greater detail and would like a guide to help you walk through the sky, please visit learnthesky.com and check out our online courses. Welcome, my name is Janine, and in this video we will explore the constellation known as Pegasus. First, let's look at some of the mythologies that surround this constellation. In Greek mythology, Pegasus is a winged horse who is the son of the mortal Medusa and Poseidon. When Perseus beheaded Medusa, Pegasus and his brother emerged from her neck. Once born, he was taken in by the muses of Mount Olympus and raised there. One story of Pegasus traces back to the Greek hero named Bellerophon. He captured Pegasus and rode him in his fight with the Chimera. It was said that Bellerophon attempted to fly with Pegasus to join the gods, but fell back to Earth. Pegasus, however, made the journey, then becoming a constellation and the servant of Zeus. There are multiple myths and legends about Pegasus, and they vary from culture to culture, just like many of the constellation stories. Now let's identify the distinctive pattern of Pegasus. The most obvious feature of Pegasus is the great square, which is outlined here. This shape dominates the sky in the autumn, and it takes up a fairly large portion of the sky. This shape is also identified as the asterism called the great square of Pegasus. Remember, an asterism is not a true constellation, but rather an easy to find shape within larger constellations. They can be used as markers to help us find our way around the sky. So here is a portion of the constellation Pegasus, and it represents a winged horse and is classified as a seasonal constellation. Now, Pegasus is a difficult constellation to get in a photograph because it is so large, but here you can see the great square of Pegasus, and then the head comes off this way and two of the legs this way. Here is a picture of Pegasus that I took with my camera phone, and while the quality of it isn't that great, it's a good photo because it does show the entire constellation of Pegasus. So before I point it out for you, are you able to identify the great square asterism that's right in the center of the photo? If you can, then you should be able to find the rest of the constellation. So here it is. We've got the great square right in the center, and then the head that jets off right here, and the two legs right here. Now, Pegasus does share a star with the constellation Andromeda, so you can start to see that constellation come off the great square as well. Now that we know the pattern of Pegasus, let's take a look at the bright stars that sit within its boundaries. So as we take a look at the official star map of Pegasus, you hopefully can identify the great square, the two legs, and then the head. The brightest stars are seated within the great square. So let's take a look and zoom in there. The alpha star is known as Markab, and it's an Arabic name that means saddle of the horse. Alpha Pegasi is a B-type giant star, which means that its core has run out of hydrogen and it's beginning to evolve beyond the main sequent phase of a star. It's in the southwest corner of the Great Square and is estimated to be 133 light years from Earth. So here is a picture of the Great Square, and hopefully you can see it right in the center. This is where Markab is. Beta Pegasi, also named Shiat, is a red giant star and the second brightest star in the constellation of Pegasus. Its name is Arabic for upper arm, and it forms the upper right corner of the Great Square. Its luminosity is 1,500 times that of our own sun. Algenib is the gamma star of this constellation. Its name is Arabic for the flank, and it is a large star with almost nine times the mass of the sun and close to five times the sun's radius. This star has also run out of hydrogen and is starting to evolve out of the main sequence phase. Now let's examine the celestial objects that sit within the boundaries of Pegasus. 
there's a galaxy, a globular cluster, and a cosmic mirage known as Einstein's Cross. First, let's take a look at NGC 7331. It is a cluster of galaxies, but the main one is this large spiral galaxy to the right of the image, and it's often referred to as Milky Way's twin because it's very similar in structure. There are a few other satellite galaxies that surround this larger galaxy, and if we zoom in here, you can see it's an unbarred spiral galaxy, and it's estimated to be 40 million light years away. Messier 15 is a globular cluster that sits within the boundaries of Pegasus. It is estimated to be 33,600 light years away, and it is one of the most densely packed globular clusters known in the Milky Way galaxy. It is also one of the oldest. It has an estimated age of 12 to 13 billion years old, and it contains over 100,000 stars. Bushra's lens is the name of the lensing galaxy that's in front of the Einstein cross. The galaxy is named for astronomer John Hushra. Here you can see that the lensed quasar resembles a cross. So the gravitational force from the galaxy creates four images of the quasar behind it. Amateur astronomers would be able to see some of the cross using telescopes but it would require extremely dark skies and telescope mirrors with diameters of 18 inches or more. Let's review what we've learned about Pegasus, the winged horse constellation. It is best seen in the autumn months and it's classified as a seasonal constellation. The best way to find it is to look for the asterism known as the Great Square of Pegasus, which takes up a really large portion of the sky. In terms of celestial objects, it contains a few galaxies, a globular cluster known as Messier 15, and a cosmic mirage known as Einstein's Cross. I wish you luck finding this constellation, and if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them in the spot below. I also want to send a huge thank you to David Coughlin for allowing me to use his amazing photographs for my videos. Be sure to check him out on Twitter. Good luck finding Pegasus!